Hello guys, as Laravel developers we all work with Composer, but do you know how it works under the hood and do you know all of its main features? I decided to shoot this short video explaining some stuff, maybe you will find out something new about Composer or understand it a bit deeper. And let's start with the first difference between Composer install and Composer update. And it all comes down to one file called Composer log. It's not only Composer JSON which is familiar to all of us, Composer log is the information, so the file contains all the information about all the versions of all the packages that are installed in the vendor already. So Composer install takes the information from Composer log and just installs the specific versions. Composer update checks the server, checks the packages.org server if there are any new versions of the same packages and then install those. So let me show you what I mean. Let's install some package, but not the latest version. So I will install my own package of Laravel Daily Laravel Invoices and the latest version is 2.0.7. Let's install version one. So Composer require Laravel Daily Laravel Invoices. And by the way, did you know that you can specify a version here? 1.0, for example. It will install a version 1.0.0 and add that information to the composer log file. So now if we go to our composer log, first that was added to the JSON automatically, but then if we find invoices here, it says version 1.0.0. And now if we run composer install, nothing to install. But if we run composer update, and in our composer JSON, we will have a rule of have the latest version then it will check for the latest version. So let's, for example, change that to 2.0 or something, and we run composer install. If we run composer install, it still doesn't check the server, but it says that the composer log is not up to date with composer JSON. So it's just a warning. It's not an error, but it just informs you that there are changes between .log and .json. But if we now run composer update, it will actually go to the server and get the version two of the package. And not only that package, it will update everything that was out of date. So as an example, Laravel Invoices is updated from 1.0 to 2.7, and it is now reflected even in Composer Log. Here you have 2.0.7. As a result of that, you should run Composer Update only on your local machine and Composer Install on the production servers or on staging servers. How it works when working with the team? If you run Composer Update on your local machine, basically you update all the packages that you need, then you push Composer Log file to the repository, to the GitHub or Bitbucket or GitLab or whatever you use, and then your teammates download those versions and run Composer install locally to have the same versions of the packages as you do. So you would be identical. And also to run Composer update on the server, it's kind of risky because first it takes longer and then second, you may get some conflicts because then Composer log file from the server will be different from each of the developers. So you would need to commit and push Composer log from the server to the GitHub and then for everyone to pull it down. This is not how it should work. So don't run Composer update on the live or staging server. That's my main advice. Next quick tip, as I mentioned here in Composer update, it will check all the packages for newest version and it would download all of them. But what if you want to update only one package and not touch anything else? You can do Composer update and then specific package like Laravel daily, Laravel invoices like this. It will not actually download anything because we've just updated the latest version, but it will check only that one package. Next, let's talk about dash dash dev flag. So for some packages, it is advised to Composer require them with dash dash dev, which means they are used only for the development environment and not really used in production. Like for example, starter kits like Laravel Breeze. So let's run exactly that and let's see what exactly it does under the hood. And I will explain it a bit deeper. So it installs the package, which is fine, but then in Composer JSON, that package is in required dev. What is the difference between require and require dev? When you run Composer install or Composer update, those packages within required dev are installed only if you're on development environment. And how do you define the development environment? 
you would think that it's environment about .env file and you would need to change app env local. But in fact, Composer is not a Laravel tool. It doesn't really know about .env files. It just knows about its own configuration, the Composer configuration. So you need to manually define whether to install the packages or not. So if you run Composer install, it installs everything. But if you run, for example, Composer update with a flag called Composer update dash dash no dev, it will not include the dev packages. So it would even remove. So in my case, it's removing all the packages that are in the dev environment, including Laravel Breeze. So in real life scenarios, to save some bandwidth and some disk space on the servers, on live production servers, you need to run composer install dash dash no dev on the live server. Locally, you can do whatever. You work with general composer install update and require, but when the application is in production, I would suggest to run dash dash no dev. If you don't do that, no big deal. It's just the packages are installed, but they are not really needed by the application. But if you want to save some disk space, dash dash no dev is your friend. Next, you probably have seen different way of syntaxing the versions in Composer JSON. So there are quite a few symbols that you can use. And I found a summary in Composer official documentation. So let's briefly take a look. Do you understand and do you know all of them? So this syntax is anything above 1.3.2, which may be version 4, version 5 or whatever. Then dot star means that 1.3. anything. So the latest of 1.3 then this is similar to star but a bit different so this is identical to 1.3 star but this is not identical it's identical to one point star so in this case we don't know what the latest version is and we just install that in this case we do know what the latest version is but we allow to install any version which is above that until like 2.0 and then probably the most popular one is to update the versions until the major version. So the first number. So this will install any version with one point something except for version zero. Then it will install 0 0.3 point something. So this is just a quick list and overview. What are the different syntax versions? And finally, if you want to just check the versions, the latest versions, but not actually update, you can run composer outdated and it will check with the packages which versions are outdated so there you go we have three packages which have latest versions but they are not in our composer and you may or may not choose to update them so these are composer tips from myself do you know anything more interesting shoot in the comments below and if you want more videos like this one subscribe to the channel and also support the channel financially by checking out one of the three products that you can see on the screen now admin panel generator my 20 courses including the latest one on solid laravel and livewire kit set of components is also on the list see you guys in other videos